Hello, this is John Purcell from QuantumLifetime.com. In this tutorial, we're going to look at angular frequency. So we've been looking at a simple equation that represents the uh, electric component, the electric field component of a plane of a um, EM wave, an electromagnetic wave like light, for example. And although this isn't a fully realistic uh, equation, after all, what equation is it? Um, it's going to be. It's going to prove to be very useful to look at these kinds of simple equations, and it avoids us having to um, immediately start dealing with Maxwell's equations. In the last tutorial, we looked at wave number, this k value here, and in this tutorial, we're going to look at omega, the angular frequency. Now, by a similar argument to one that we looked at in the last tutorial, we we can see that sine. In fact, let's uh, let's just consider sine of omega t like this. So we'll leave k, kx out of this just for the moment and we'll leave the negative sign out here because the argument we're going to go through applies equally well to sine omega t. It's just that um, in the final equation of course we're using both k and omega. So we know that that's going to be equal to sine of omega t plus 2 pi because if we add 2 pi onto the angle in sine we're going all the way around the circle and we should get the same result again. And that's also going to be equal to omega t plus capital T. And what this capital T is, is the period of the wave. So it's how long, uh, in, in seconds or whatever, the wave takes to repeat itself. And if we add that to t before we um, multiply by omega, if we, if we move on that amount of time, then we must get the same value uh, out for sine. Sorry, I've missed off a sign here. Here we go. So this must give us the same value as this and this because of the periodic nature of the sine function. So we can infer from this that omega t plus 2 pi, that's this um, argument here to sine, equals, and this time I, I don't intend to write sine, uh, equals omega, let's multiply this one out here, omega t plus omega capital T, the period. And we can see from this that omega capital T equals 2 pi, which means that omega equals 1 divided by the period times 2 pi. Now what is 1 divided by t? t is the period of the wave, the time it takes for one wave to pass. And 1 divided by t is equal to the frequency, which we'll, we'll call f here. So we can see that omega is actually equal to 2 pi times f. So the frequency is the number of waves that pass in a unit period of time, let's say a second. It's the number of waves that pass in a second. That's called the frequency. And so omega is equal to 2 pi times the number of waves that pass in a second. And because of this connection that we saw in the last tutorial between 2 pi uh, and the circle, omega is, is often called the angular frequency. So um, it's as if, like, if, if we have a circle that like, represents um, where the radius is one second, it's as if we're, we can fit omega number of waves around the circumference like this. So that's, that's it for this tutorial. Um, I thought it would be useful just to go over the, fi the like, physical significance of these constants. And this applies to kind of um, modeling any wave, really. But in the, in the next tutorial, we're going to go on to look at the energy that's, um, that's carried by a light wave. And in fact, we're not going to look at that in detail. We're not going to use Maxwell's equations. We're going to stick with this plane wave equation. And we're just going to look at how the energy carried by the wave is related to this um, to the electric field strength E. So join me again next time, and don't forget you can find more stuff, including a, pod, a non technical podcast about consciousness, on quantumlifetime.com. And until next time, keep it real.